that God has for you. They're here to assist us in life. Amen. They're valuable. Look at the book of uh, Revelation, the 19th chapter. Now, John was in the island of Patmos when he received the revelation of the rapture of the church and what would happen during the tribulation period. And uh, this was revealed to him by an angel. The angel, an angel, an angel can bring revelation to you, amen, as, as the Lord see fit. Now, I, I want to caution you because there is, there is teachings going on in, in, Christ, in Christendom to here in the United States today where people are teaching to seek angelic visitations. You, sh you should never, never do that because that violates the word of God. Hello. We don't worship angels, and we certainly never ask God for an angel to appear. When you do that, you are opening yourself up to deception. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12 that the, angel, that the devil can transform himself into the angel of light. That's how some of these cults got started, like Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormonism. And an angel appeared to an individual, amen, one to Joseph Smith, and, and, and gave him supposedly some revelation. And God was displeased with the church. He gave him some kind of revelation. And these, 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 these cults have, have started and have let many, many people uh, down the path of destruction. But however, we, we, we do want to understand that whether you see an angel or not, they're here. Hello. I mean, they're all around this pulpit right now because they hang out with me all the time. I know how to employ them. I know how to keep them around me. Hello? They, 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 they have built up a hedge. See, angels build a hedge around you. Hello? They're here to build a hedge to protect you. Now, the Bible says that you can break down the hedge. I think it's Ecclesiastes 10.8. And if you, if you break down the hedge, the serpent will bite you. Hello? You know, that's what, happened to, that's what happened to Job. You read Job, the first chapter. You, you, you read Job, the first chapter. God, uh, uh, Satan told God, God, you have built a hedge around everything that he owns. I mean, there was a hedge around him, his wealth, his family, his kids. But he pulled down the hedge with his words, words of fear. You'll find that in, he, in Job 6.24. I have to preach fast because... You know, I don't have time to read all these scriptures. Write them down and read them later. Amen. He told God, he said, God, I, I had to straighten out my, my mouth. See, because he said over there in, in Job, the second chapter, the things that I greatly feared have come upon me. He operated in fear. He was all, always offering up sacrifices to God in case his children, his children sinned. That's not faith. That's fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. And he broke down the hedge. And the Bible says, if you break down the hedge, the serpent will bite you. That's in Ecclesiastes around 10, 10 8 or so. And that's what happened. The devil came in and killed his kids. Amen. Destroyed his, destroyed his wealth. Attacked him physically. And then, in, and then inspired his ungodly wife to say, curse God and die. You might as well curse God and die. What a, what a wonderful wife, huh? Oh, dear Lord, how'd you like to be married to her? She uh, was Louise. <clears throat> Amen. All right. Now, the, look at Revelation 19, verse 10. Let's read verse 9. And then he said to me, this is the angel speaking to John, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these, these are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant. What are they? Servants. We just read in Hebrews 1 14, they're here to minister to or to serve us. And of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. That, that does. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. We worship God. We don't worship angels. But we do acknowledge the fact that they've been given to service. Glory to God. Amen. And these, 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 these angels are big. I mean, they're big boys. Amen. They're not little dwarfs, little wimps, you know. They're big boys. Look at Hebrews, I mean, uh, Revelation 22, verse 8 and 9. And, uh, you know, John was so overwhelmed with the revelation that he saw that again, and, and the anointing that this angel carried, you know, and the authority that he spoke with God's authority to reveal these things to him, that he's just so overwhelmed, you know. And he went to worship the angel again. And it says in verse 8, Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to, before the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren and the prophets and of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. So again, he says, don't worship, I'm, a, I'm your servant. 
But I notice that he says that he is a servant to those who keep the words of this book. So that, that means you can't be living in sin, hello, and expect the angels of God to protect you and to minister to you. Now, let me, let me, let me clarify sin because see, sometimes we think of sin as adultery, fornication, drug use, you know, and, that, and that's all sin. But here, here's a, what the Bible says about sin. You ready? James 4, 17. To him who knoweth to do right and doesn't do it, to him it's sin. Uh, once you know what the word says, God expects you to obey his word and keep it. When you don't do it, you're sinning. When you sin, you break the hedge. And if you don't close the hedge by repenting of your sins and confessing your sins, as this is in 1 John 1, 9. Now, there, there's a doctrine of the devil being perpetrated on the church today by a man named Joseph Prince, who has written a book, who's become very popular, that teaches, okay, that teaches that you never have to confess your sins to the believer, that the book, the epistles of John were written to the agnostics. That is a lie from the pit of hell, amen, and it's being verbalized by pulpits, from, from pulpits in America. That's not what the Bible teaches. And when you open the door to, to the devil by sinning, you have to close that door by judging yourself. Hello? I mean, this, this gentleman goes on to say that, that God will be un, uh, unjust to, to, to judge you. God brings judgment upon his people. The Bible says so. It says, that, it says in Hebrews 10, God will judge his people. It says in 1 Peter 4, 17, judgment begins in the household of God. And in 1 Corinthians 11, 30 through 32, it says, for this reason, many of you are weak, sick, and asleep. And asleep didn't mean that they fell asleep in church. They died prematurely. Why? Because they didn't discern the Lord's body. They didn't judge themselves concerning sin. Sin opens the door to the devil. Hello? Now, you know, if you're a Joseph Prince fan, don't get mad at him. Just tell him what the Bible says. And I'm mentioning his name because he's gone public with this. He's made tons of money off these books that he's selling, and it's erroneous. And he's on national television. And what saddens me in America is that, is, that, is that everybody wants to be politically correct in the church. Well, we don't want to mention anybody's name. Well, you know, if you put stuff out there that's affecting the church, we, we as ministers ought to protect the people by telling them the truth. Amen? And, and Paul did that. Paul named names. Amen? He told the truth in love, so I'm not here, you know, trying to be harsh or anything. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. You, you decide what's the truth. I'm signing with the word. I just gave you what the scripture said. I don't care how popular a preacher is. If it don't line up with the word of God, I'm following the Lord. The Lord is the word. Amen. Jesus is the word. Hello. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Lord. Now, even the Lord Jesus Christ had angels on, on this earth ministering to him. Look at Mark, the first chapter. And the reason being because contrary to some, what some people believe, Jesus did not operate as God on this earth. He couldn't have operated as God on this earth because it would have been illegal. Because in Genesis 1, God gave the earth to man for 6,000 years. And in order for God to... To move on this earth, he has to operate through a man. That's why Jesus had to take human form. You know, he said, he said, he said that uh, the, 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 the thief came in illegally. He said, I came through the door. He's talking about the door of human birth. The devil came in here illegally. He, de he, he, de he deceived Eve and Adam committed high treason and turned his, his authority in this world over to, over to the devil. That's how he got in. Jesus came legally. He was born of a virgin. Hallelujah. And he became a man. The Bible says in Philippians, the second chapter, verse six through eight, out of the living Bible, he put aside his mighty power and glory. He became a, a man and, and a servant. So that's why he had to be anointed by the spirit. The only difference between you and Jesus is that he was sinless and you were not. He was just as human as you, you are. He had to go to the bathroom. He got thirsty. He, had he got tired. Amen. He dealt with every, every kind of sin. Uh, you know, the temptation I'm talking about, but, 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 but never yielded to it. Hello. He wept. He bled. He's human. And he needed help. And look at what it says in Mark, the first chapter, verse 13. And the ones that helped them are the angels. And he says, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan and was with wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. Hello. 
Well, guess what? The angels will minister to you. Hallelujah. Look at Luke 22. This is in, <clears throat> when he was uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane resisting sin. He was resisting the desire not to go to the cross. That's why he prayed. He said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from him, but not my will, but your will be done. And he resisted sin to the point of shedding blood. He, he prayed so firmly that blood came through his pores. That's how much stress he was under. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, you, you have not yet resisted unto, unto blood. Amen. He's talking about Jesus' passion there when he was resisting, not going to the cross. Why? Well, because he knew what was going to happen to them. He knew the physical torture he was going to suffer. But that wasn't the thing that he hated the most. The thing that he hated the most was that he was going to go to three days and three nights in hell and be separated from his father. Hello? Are you following me? And the temptation to do it some other way, but he, he, he prayed a prayer of consecration. He said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass me. Let's do this some other way. But if not, not my will, but your will be done. I'm willing to lay it all down for you. Glory to God. Amen. That's the lifestyle that you and I are supposed to live. You got to put down your flesh and do what God says. And so many people are not willing to do that. Well, Jesus said, if, you, if you're not willing to carry your cross and die daily, you're not worthy of me. The Lord said that. Hello. You know, he said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, you'll have to come into the, enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father. That's Matthew 7, 21 through 27. He said, many will say on that day, didn't we prophesy in your name? Amen. Didn't we cast that devil? Didn't we do miracles in your name? He said, I never knew you. Depart from you who, who work iniquity. The Amplified Bible says, you who work iniquity, disregarding my commandments. Hello? You can't disregard the word of God. You know, Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? <clears throat> I'm not an amen preacher. You can say amen and you can, you can stand there and look at me like the frozen chosen. Don't bother me one bit. I preach in some churches, Julio. It's so cold in there, you can ice skate, man. Don't bother me. You know, there's always one live one in the crowd. I focus on that live one. You know, there's always somebody that's hungry for God. And one, I live one person. I, I preach to them. Amen. Hopefully resurrect the rest of them from the dead. <clears throat> amen. I don't, I don't preach for amens and I don't preach to get invited back. Because I'm responsible for God to tell people the truth. Amen. So Luke 22, verse, uh, verse uh, 39 through 43. <clears throat> it says, uh, Luke 22, verse 39 through 43. It says, coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, and he was accustomed, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place where he says to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed. When you're facing temptation, you should pray. Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, men ought to pray always. The disciples didn't pray, they fell asleep. Hello? Jesus prayed, he overcame temptation. The disciples didn't pray, they all fell away, they all backslid, they all denied the Lord. Uh, you know, the Bible says, if any man is in trouble, James the fifth chapter, let him do what? Pray. It didn't say call up everybody and ask him for prayer. I mean, I get so tired of people but constantly sending prayer requests. I had one person from overseas, I mean, like every day, you know, pray, pray for my grandmother, pray that I get a better job. Pray. I wrote back, I said, why don't you do your own praying for a while, you know? It's like, you know, you want to live off my faith? Come on, give me a break here, you know? That's why some people want to live, because they're lazy. That's what it boils down to. They're lazy. They're carnal. Carnal people don't want to pray. They want to watch TV, feed their face. They don't want to pray. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching so good. Amen? If I haven't gotten to where you live, I'll get there shortly. Just hang on. Uh, it says, um, you'll get that later. I know it's early in the morning. <laughs> now, the people that don't know me, you know, they're probably saying, where the world did the pastor get this guy from, you know? <laughs> the people that know me here, you know, <laughs> they, know they know what this is all about. But... Amen. We don't patty cake. Now, it says... Um, Verse 41, and he was withdrawn from, the, from them a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, it is, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your, yours be done. 
Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. So when you are in trouble, when you're going through trial and tribulation, who should you turn to? Hello. Now, you know, I understand that people sometimes are baby Christians. They, they turn to the pastor all the time. They're always turning to the people. But folks, we need to get beyond that. Amen. People are not our strength. Did you hear what I said? The Bible says uh, there's, there's a curse pronounced on man in, in, in Jeremiah 17, around verse 3 or so. It says, curses the man that departs from God and puts his, his strength in the arm of flesh or his confidence in the arm of flesh. I confidence in other people. People are like the weather, man. Man, people, people tell you how much they love you on Sunday, split your church on Wednesday when they don't like something. Hello? You ever have that? Oh, yeah. I passed for 14 years through congregation. I don't know what I'm talking about. People like the weather. They change. Huh? They change. Even people that have been walking with God for a long time. They do some crazy stuff. There's a very popular minister right now that used to preach the word of faith and everything all over the world, and now he's pr practicing Hinduism, following after some dead Hindu, Hindu uh, guy that was 90-something years old, died in 2004. Forget the guy's name. Hello. Very popular preacher. I told you about it. I think I showed you the video. They did an interview. He said, uh, I, 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 you know, I've been searching for the truth for the last four years, you know, because what I used to preach doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, you know, bear well with me anymore. And now I follow Jesus, but I follow Hindu. And I follow, and he mentioned this, this guy's name. People change. People can be deceived. Amen. But the Lord is the strength of our life. And God, when, when, when you pray, God's angels respond by strengthening you, by helping you. Amen. They're there to assist you. They don't slumber or sleep. When I pass it, I used to tell the people, listen, I need to sleep. I'm not God. I'm not on call 24 seven. God doesn't slumber or sleep. I do. I need a break every once in a while. I need a vacation every once in a while. I need to get away from you for, after a while. Amen. I bet pastors need to get away. They need to go refuel. Hello. You think being a pastor is easy? Huh? People calling you up all kinds of hours, all kinds of problems all the time. Hello? Yeah. You want to be in the ministry, you better count the cost. That's why when, when, when Elijah threw his mantle over Elijah, and he said, let me go back and bury, you know, uh, uh, say goodbye to my parent. He said, go ahead. He said, you don't know what I've done to you by, by, by putting you in the ministry. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, you think the ministry is fun? Oh yeah, it can be fun at times when you're under the anointing and stuff, but there's a price to pay. Huh? Uh, yeah, well, that's another subject for another time. Look at the Exodus, uh, the 23rd chapter. Let me see where I'm at with time. Oh, I'm good. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Look at what it says. Exodus, the 23rd chapter, verse 20. It says, um, it says this, as soon as I find it. It says, uh, behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you in the way. That means to protect you. And to bring you into the place which I have prepared for you. So they go before you, making the crooked places straight. Amen. They bring you to the promised land that God has for you. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Now, this is a very important point. Angels cannot forgive your sins. Now, keep that in the back of your mind. I'm going to show you how that ties in with the message. Angels cannot pardon your sins. Hello. If you sin, they can't say, oh, I know she's having a bad day, but I'm going to protect her anyway. No, they can't do that. All right. Now I'm going to show you in a minute how that ties in. He said, he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak when I, I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries, for my angel will go before you and bring you into the Amorites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Canaanite, and the Hivites, and the Jebusite, and I will cut them off. Glory. All right. Now go over to Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter. Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter. Angels cannot forgive you of sin. 
they, they don't have the power to do so. They don't have the authority to do so. And they're not going to violate the word of God. In Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter, it says, uh, verse, five, uh, verse one, walk prudently when you go to the, the house of God and draw near to him rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they do not know they do, they do evil. Do not be rash, rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven, you are on earth, therefore let your words be few. For a dream comes through much activity and a fool's voice is known by his many words. In other words, a person that blabs and doesn't think about what he's saying. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Huh? Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to, to make a vow and not pay. Huh? Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Nor say before the messenger of God or the angel of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? Now, I've known throughout the 34 years that I've been in ministry, people that make unsolicited promises and don't keep their word. Folks, that's sin. Hello? That's sin. And what happens is that by doing that, you break down the hedge. And you open the door for the enemy to come in and steal from you and do all kinds of harm to you. And, and angels can't go, oh, I know she's having a bad day. Oh, I know she's having a hard, no, no. I know he's, he's, you know, he's going through a rough time. No, they, they don't have that authority. Hello. Here's what angels do. Go to Psalm 103 and, and let me begin to close. <clears throat> Psalm 103. Let me show you how these angels are employed and how they are unemployed. This is what the angels are allowed to do. I mean, this is what they respond to. Either in a positive way or in a negative way, depending on you. Yeah. That's why the Bible talks so much about guarding your mouth. Hello? I mean, I, if I had time, I could show you so many scriptures that talk about guarding your mouth. This is what it says. Psalm 107, uh, verse, uh, verse 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. I told you they're powerful. Read Isaiah 37, 26. One of them killed 185,000 Assyrians. One angel. Bless the Lord, you his angel, who excel in strength, who do his word. What do they do? Heeding the voice of his word. They hear and obey his word. Now, let, let me ask you to do something. Take your Bible and put it next to your ear and let me know if you hear something. How many, how many, how many are hearing anything right now? Well, I'm glad you didn't lift up your hand. I had to pray for you. Because this Bible is a book, I mean, that somebody has to give voice to. And that person is you. And when those angels hear your word, the word of God coming out of your mouth, they will do whatever you're saying that the word says. They'll bring it to pass in your life. Now, when you speak contrary to the word, what does the Bible says in Romans 14, 23? Whatsoever is not of faith is what? Sin. So you can't talk doubt and unbelief and expect these angels to go, oh, she's under stress. You know, her husband's acting like a real nut job. And, and, and I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway for her just because she's such, such a nice lady. She, he can't do that. We just saw he can't pardon your transgressions. Are you following me? These are spiritual principles or spiritual laws that you can work for your benefit. Hello? Or to your detriment. Now, if you catch yourself saying things contrary to the word of God, don't get on the condemnation. You just repent. Hello? It's just that say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I realize that that doesn't line up with the word of God. I cancel the assignment of those words. And I declare what your word says and then say what the word says. And those words are nullified. They're canceled. Amen. This, the sin of, 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 of unbelief and unbelief is evil. Hello. We, we treat unbelief so lightly. Unbelief is evil, my friend. Hebrews, the third chapter says that Israel didn't enter into the promised land and died in the wilderness because they had an evil heart of unbelief. Why? They spoke contrary to the word. Read Numbers 14. Twelve spies went out to spy out the land. Two of them came back with a positive report. Joshua and Caleb. Yeah, we can take the land. Yeah, it flows with milk and honey. The other ten, oh yeah, but there are giants in the land. We're like grasshoppers. We can't go in there. 
spoke contrary to the word, had an evil heart and unbelief. They died and caused over a million people not to enter into the promised land. Hello? And they died in the wilderness, died at 70 years old. Some of them lasted to 90, to 80 rather. That's found in Psalm 90. Wasn't the will of God. The will of God says, what long life will I satisfy and show you my salvation? Uh -uh. Now look at Daniel. We're going to read Daniel, the, the 10th chapter, verse 14. Daniel was given vision, a vision about the Antichrist, about end time events that would take place. And he began to seek God for three weeks. He fasted and prayed and sought the Lord about what this, this revelation, these visions that he had meant. And God sent an angel with the, with, with the, with the response. And this is what, what the angel says to him in the uh, 12th chapter of Daniel, Daniel 10, 12. This is the angel speaking to him. He said, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of what? I have come because of your word. Some of you need to bring your Bible to church. Amen. I have come because of your words. Your words. Words are important. This, this business of, you know, sticks and stones will make, break my bones. Words will never hurt me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Words will destroy you. Words will hinder your angels. They'll unemploy them. They will open the door for the devil to come with his angels and, and cause you great harm to you and your family. Hello, you better watch what you say. Huh? Better watch what you say. Be careful who you hang around with. Don't hang around with people that, that talk trash. Talk con constantly talking around. Uh, 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 and I'm, I'm talking about even some Christian people. Talk all kinds of foolish stuff. What are talking about? Always talking about, oh, they're feeding, killing them. They're, 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 you know, they're just dying to do this. They're, that's foolish talk. Hello, your feet aren't killing you, but you keep saying that they're going to kill you. Uh, they're dying of hunger. They're dying of laughter. Why do they talk like that? Because the devil has programmed people's speech. He knows that's the way to destroy them. Death and life, Proverbs 18, 20, and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You will eat the fruit of your words. The Bible says in Proverbs, the 12th chapter and the 13th chapter, that a man's stomach will be satisfied by the fruit of his lips. Uh, you can talk yourself into poverty. Some people are always talking about how broke they are. I'm never broke. I've been, be, I've been, I've been in between money. <laughs> yeah, I've been there a couple of times. In between the money I had and the money that's coming. But every day I get up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you. The money's coming to me now. Glory to God in abundance. Thank you because I've given it is given unto me. Woo, thank you, Jesus, for the hundredfold return of all my giving. <laughs> yeah, I refuse to say broke. Don't exist in my vocabulary. And quit talking about, oh, the economy is so, everything's so expensive. I go to the, you know, I can't afford to, you're talking yourself into poverty. Hello. Why don't you start saying things like, bless God, my God supplies all my need. Don't make a difference what's happening in this economy. God's not regulated by the economy of the United States of America or any other country. Why don't you talk like that? I mean, the angels will perk up, man. You know, I mean, some, some people's angels are bummed out, man. I mean, they... They, they, they just they just hang around all day long like this. Oh, gee, where's Louis? There we go again. Another negative confession. Oh. And they watch the devil come and beat your brains and they can't do anything about it. I mean, you know, they they are they're they're, they're created beings. They they get fulfillment out of doing the will of God. And the will of God is for them to serve you, to strengthen you, to minister to you. <laughs> Psalm 91. Let me close there. Psalm 91. We're good. We're good. Wanna let the Holy Ghost move. He said, preach short, I want to move. So in a moment, you guys get ready. Music ministry. As a matter of fact, you can start coming up now if you want. Psalm 91. You know, we, we are backed up by a second service in the service, so we have to watch the time clock. You can, if, you, if you want to come back to the Spanish service, you stay. We always go a little longer there, you know. Listen to Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. This is somebody that's walking close to God. If you want God's protection, you've got to walk close to God. How do you walk close to God? You obey his word. You spend time in prayer. You, 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 you put aside quality time every day. You should get up in the morning and start out with God. Hello, not with Oprah or NBC, Fox or whatever. You start out with God. 
You take quality time. It, it, you know, get up a half hour early, whatever. Hello? I, that, I'm not telling you something I don't practice. I've been practicing that for years. I get up extra early every morning, and I spend my day first with God. Why? Because I need God in my life to deal with the day, amen? To deal with all the stuff that's out there, to deal with this wicked world, to deal with, you know, the devil and everything else, amen? So I spend time feeding my faith in the word. I spend time praying, not only for myself, but for other people. I pray for you guys every day. I pray for all the churches and all the pastors that I preach in every day. If you want to cl walk close to God and reap the benefits. Listen, look at verse two. I will say of the Lord. What are you saying about the Lord? Huh? What are you saying about the Lord? Huh? Are you saying, that, thank God that Jesus is my healer. Don't make a difference to what I feel like right now. By his stripes, I'm healed. Are you saying, thank God that my God supplies all my need. I'm not moved by what I see. Hello? See, what are you saying about the Lord? The Lord is my refuge and strength. What are you saying about the Lord? Are you talking weakness, lack, sickness, or are you talking what the word says? I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. We are living in perilous times. And they are going to become more perilous. I see some things coming down the horizon. I was sharing some of these things with the pastor last night. I'm not going to get into it now because I don't have the time to really explain some things. Uh, but these blood moons, we've had three of them. I preached on this and, and I put it on YouTube. It's on YouTube. You can watch it free. Go on my YouTube channel if you didn't hear the messages. The signs of the coming of the Lord. It's on my YouTube channel. There's about 30 videos in there. And, and the things that are happening right now, we just had the third blood moon just on the fourth yesterday. All right. We had a, a total uh, uh, eclipse of the sun, March 20th. We're going to have another blood moon now, September 28th. That's the last one. These are signals. God is signaling something's coming upon the earth. Amen. And, and uh, war, is, war is coming. It's going to affect not only the Middle East, but, but the rest of the world. Amen. And stuff. And I'll tell you, you better, you better be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. You better know how to, how to exercise your faith in God's protection. Hello, lest you perish with the wicked. You know, here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 4, 6. My, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. People will go out here and, and, and spend $300 on a Gucci bag. God forbid they go back there and spend $10, $20 on getting some materials to feed their faith. Hello, don't shout me down because I'm preaching so good. That's the truth anyway. If you can't say amen, say oh me. Here, here's what it says. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowl. And that may be surely. God is not a man that he shall lie. Has he spoken it? Will he not bring it to pass? Numbers 23, 19. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. What is, your, what is his truth? John 17, 17 says, thy word is truth. That word coming out of your mouth constantly is a shield and buckler. Man, that's your hedge of protection because those angels are hearkening onto that word, glory to God, and they, and they are protecting you. They are guarding you from all the attacks of the enemy. Amen? Oh, I've had the Lord protect me so many different times. I remember one time I went to Trinidad to preach, and they, they took me to this town. I mean, you can cut the presence of the devil with a knife. It was so thick in there. But, man, I just felt like I was in this protective bubble, you know? Had no fear in me. I just knew I was protected. I, I, I thought about that movie of that the, the bubble boy. Years ago, they had that movie, that kid was in a little bubble, you know? That's the way I felt. Hello? But you gotta believe this stuff and say it with your mouth and believe it in your heart. And it, it, is, it doesn't get into your heart by hearing one sermon. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, you wanna know why the word of God doesn't work for a lot of people? Because they're operating out of head knowledge, not heart knowledge. Uh. The word has to go from here and here, and it takes time to get it in there. That's why God said in Joshua 1 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate on the what? Day and night, not just on Sunday. You know, they have drive through, drive through churches now in Florida. The last time I was here, somebody said they have them here in, 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 Do in Dover. Drive through churches. Give me a Pentecostal break. That is so contrary to the scripture. <laughs> Uh-huh. Dear Lord, that's the blind leading the blind. It says, 
Verse 5, you shall not be afraid for the terror by night. You don't have to be afraid of terrorism. Not if you walk close to God. Know of the arrow to fly by day. Know of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Hey, you don't have to be afraid of Ebola or any other kind of Ebola. Know the pestilence that walks in darkness. Know the destruction of the lathe in noonday. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Glory to God. Amen. Hey. Well, brother, what happens if they blow up a dirty bomb? I believe God can protect you from a dirty bomb, any other kind of bomb. Hello? But I've heard of I've heard of testimonies where tornadoes came down in a certain town, and a believer stood outside and said, I plead the blood of my house, and that tornado caused havoc all around them, but didn't touch their house. Same thing with fire. Those people knew how to believe God. Hello, but you don't, you don't get to believe in God that way by, you know, getting one of those little uh, promise cards out of your little, uh, you know, thing that they have. You know, people get these little cards with scriptures on them. They put them and they, that's, they, they spend time with the Lord. You know, they wrote one little card like reading a fortune cookie. Well, I guess you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, and this, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, which, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No wonder, no wonder Moses has such boldness, man, to go to Pharaoh, man, you know. He knew God had his angels, had his back, man. Hallelujah. No evil shall be for you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Did you hear that? No evil shall be for you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Amen. And whoever's dwelling in your house is protected. Hello. Come on. Even those ungodly kids. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you what? In all your ways. Glory to God. I'm blessing the city. I'm blessing the field. I'm blessing New Jersey. I'm blessing Delaware. Woo! In their hand they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample in the foot. That's talking about demonic power. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, we see here how, how you're protected from by these angels. Glory to God. Thank God for the angels. Because he has set his love upon me. Because he has what? Well, what did Jesus say about loving him? John 14, 21 through 27. He that loveth keepeth my commandments. He that doesn't love me does not keep my commandments. Didn't get an amen there, but it's true. I appreciate the background music, though. <laughs> because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Glory. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Glory. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's stand up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus, glory, glory. for these great and precious promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I came, oh, thank you, Lord. I, I like I, to cry. I'm so glad that Jesus is alive. So holy. You know, th th there's a song that goes like this. Hallelujah. It says this. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Well, God's not dead. He's still alive, God's not dead. He's still alive, God's not dead. He's still alive, I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Well, look what the Lord has done. Woo! 
Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day is just the same. Come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, folks, I know that this is the first service, and, you know, you all worked late last night, but, you know, some of us, when we were younger and stuff, we went out partying, came home 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, went to work the next day, came home, went partying all over again. Now we're saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, sanctified, and, you know, the anointing is here, and we, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, get people to worship God, because, you know, you can get healed without the preacher laying hands on you. You can start praising God, and God can heal you. God can deliver you from whatever's troubling you. He did it for the children of Israel in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. Amen. They went out and started praising God, and God brought confusion in the army's camp, and they fought against each other and died. They went and got the spoils. But, you know, the, the Lord had me. I only sang it because the Lord led me to do that. And some of you are going to just. He's the God He's the I feel him in my hand. Hello, man. Put some kind of, you know, uh, you know, get some Jared's Hall or something. I mean, hallelujah. They probably don't know what Jared's Hall is. <laughs> you know what Jared's Hall is, right? How many know what Jared's Hall is? Amen. Some of us older folks know what Jared's Hall. I don't even, I don't know if they sell that stuff anymore. But it's some kind of vitamin it's supposed to give you a boost, you know. Amen. Listen to me. How many of you tonight, today, will be honest with God and say, you know what, while you preach, God dealt with me about some things in my life that are not right, and I want to make them right tonight. Lift up your hand. Hallelujah. I see a lot of hands up there. A lot of hands. A lot of hands. I'm not going to call you up for time's sake. Here's what I want you to do. This is between you and God. It's nobody's business. I don't know what God has said to you. Hey, man, I'm just a mailman. The mailman is not allowed to read your mail. I just deliver it. But we're going to pray, and you're going to talk to God quietly and repent of whatever it is that God's dealt with you about. Amen. I, I, don't, know, I don't know what it is, but you need to confess it before the Lord and say, Lord, I, I, I acknowledge that in my life. It's wrong. I repent of it, and I receive your forgiveness. The moment you do that, God forgives you and forgets it. Amen. And the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, if you confess your sin and forsake it, you'll have mercy. If you cover it, you won't prosper. And I believe that God will anoint you with fresh oil and begin to move afresh in your life. So let's bow our heads and pray this with me. Say, say Heavenly Father, I, I, I ask you today to forgive me. I recognize, and then name, name whatever it is that he's dealt with you in your life quietly. Nobody else needs to know it's none of their business. Just say to the Lord. You may have to take a little, few moments. Maybe there was more than one thing that God dealt with you about in their service. And I, and I repent of that, Lord, today. Say, I repent of that, Lord, today. And I receive your forgiveness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, Father, I, I leave here today with the decision made in my heart to be a doer of the word and not a hearer. I don't want to grieve you. I don't want to grieve the Holy Ghost. And I certainly don't want to grieve the angels of God that you've given to protect me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now lift your hands and thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's a song that rises in my spirit. It goes like this. Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. The anointing upon us renew. That we may cease to be weary. And go forth with our strength renewed. 
Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. The anointing upon us renew. That we may cease to be weary. And go forth with our strength renewed. Move, Spirit, move. Do what you want to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you need a fresh touch from God today, I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to come. Go quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The anointing is here to minister to you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says he can.